Hey guys, found an article I did a long time ago. I used to be a film writer, a reviewer for my university's newspaper, and <laughs> I found this review that never saw the light of day because they told me in quote, it was too harsh, which I don't know, they really should have put this in because this was funny. I never really went this harsh on a film when I wrote any reviews about it. Even if it wasn't that very good of a film, I would be constructive, but we all know that the first Clash of Titans, Clash of the Titans uh, remake was terrible. And the fact that they were able to, are bold enough, daft enough to make a sequel, this was going to be a piece of garbage. We all knew that. Anyways, I'm just going to read the review. Let's have a picture up in front. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to talk about this one because I am ruthless. I show no mercy in this review. This is how old, this is which, this is me six years ago. So this is 22 year old me? Yeah, right? Yeah, math fail. Oh, and we know this is good because it starts with a quote from the film. Quote, we do what people say can't be done. We hope when there isn't any. Whatever the odds we face, we prevail, end quote. An amusing line quoted by Andromeda in the Greek-inspired blockbuster Wrath of the Titans. While the quote is meant to uplift the one-dimensional heroes of the film, I can't help but believe this was the inspirational quote the producers said to themselves when they thought that making this movie was a good idea. By replacing previous director Louise Letrier with Jonathan Lisbon, and giving Sam Worthington hair, Wrath of the Titans attempts to better its origins and fails in almost every aspect. Flying on its own accord due to the fact that there is no sequel to the original 1981 Clash of the Titans, Wrath pits Perseus against the endless waves of emerging demons from the underworld bent on resurrecting the original god Cronus. Rather than building the film up to this discovery, a character describes the plot in three short sentences before turning to sand and luckily perishing in the first ten minutes. One of the main problems with Clash of the Titans was the film forgot to make us care about the reason why Perseus was putting himself in harm's way. The little to no use of character development and rising action threw almost anything resembling sensible story out the window. With a sequel, they do not even attempt it. Instead, we get a large picture book with lots of words and lots of scribbled explosions. This might explain why Gemma Arten's character, Io, is killed off off-screen due to her possibly disagreeing with how little of a script there was for this disaster. It almost feels like the filmmakers got lazy with story elements rather than accidentally missing them. For example, in Clash, Mad Mickelson's character led the Queen's Guard along with Perseus, who were ultimately used as red shirts. In Wrath, a similar group follows Perseus and Andromeda on their quest, but with their fate being an obvious foregone conclusion, they are not given names, <laughs> let alone dialogue. Besides Worthington's bland performance, other actors join in on the list of one-faced characters. Liam Neeson reprising his role as Zeus, but looking awfully eager to bite the bullet throughout the entire film. Rosamund Pike replaces Alexa Davalos as Andromeda, who portrays the stereotype woman leader character role while degrading it down more than most would ever think possible. Edgar Ramirez gives a swing at the Worst Actor of the Year award as the stone-faced Ares. However, Ralph Fiennes, who remembers that he is a credible actor, tries to give a reasonable performance as Hades, struggling with his inner hate and respect for his brother Zeus. The one positive to be had with this film was that the special effects are quite outstanding. While this obviously doesn't save the film, it at least gives us something pretty to look at, while the horrible dialogue tries to melt our brains. The 3D is also an improvement, whereas last time was a last minute gimmick to get people in the theaters. For Wrath, the hard work is visible, especially when there is a terrifying snake tail creature lunging at the screen. During the final battle, lava, rock, and sulfur are flying at the screen with such ferocity that it almost becomes too much for the viewer to handle. And while the amount of explosions in this film would make Michael Bay envious, it does not excuse how empty the explosions are. Wrath of the Titans was a sequel that truly didn't deserve to make it past the drawing board, and its broken, light, bright structure is visible throughout the entire feature. While the special effects in 3D have indeed improved, that does not excuse the lazy effort on the writers and the lack of focus from the actors. Hopefully Warner Brothers will realize the utter catastrophes these films have been 
and either will make a worthwhile threequel or scrap it into the pit of Hades where it belongs. Yeah, I was harsh. But I'm not wrong. That movie was fucking terrible. Does anyone even remember the Clash of the Titans remakes that they made? I remember there was a bunch of hype for Clash of Titans. I know that. And again, it was caught on with the whole 3D gimmick. Like the 3D was terrible. I remember seeing it. I actually went and saw it opening night with my brother and my friend. And that was a big mistake. I, I acknowledge that now. It was a terrible mistake. If you like that, I just thought it'd be cool to talk about that. Anyways, that's all for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, maybe like it. And if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time.